mean rotational energy of a diatomic molecule. The kinetic energy of a diatomic molecule rotating about an axis perpendicular to the line joining the two atoms is classically given by j squared over 2a. j is the angular momentum, a is the moment of inertia. In a quantum mechanical description, this energy can assume discrete values, h bar square, j j plus 1 over 2a, where the quantum number j, which determines the magnitude of the angular momentum j, can assume possible values 0 to infinity. For each value of j, there are two j plus 1 distinct possible quantum states, which correspond to the discrete possible special orientations of the angular momentum vector j. Suppose that the diatomic molecule is in a gas in equilibrium at the absolute temperature T. To calculate the mean energy of rotation of this diatomic molecule, proceed as follows. First, calculate the partition function using the definition of problem 418. Be careful to remember that this is a sum containing a term for each individual state. Assume that T is sufficiently large so that KT is much greater than h bar squared over 2a, a condition satisfied for most diatomic molecules at room temperature. Show that the sum Z can then be approximated by an integral using uh, U equals JJ plus 1 as a continuous variable. <clears throat> okay, so um, first of all, I would like to see how uh, I can write the uh, rotational kinetic energy of a diatomic molecule. So let's say that uh, my molecule is uh, sitting here. So this is the origin which contains the first atom and this is the uh, second atom. Uh, and this is the x-axis, this is the y-axis and z is uh, coming out. So z is coming out. Okay, so uh, if r is the distance between these two atoms, uh, r is the distance between them, uh, I can write the moment of inertia, so this has mass m, this has mass m, the moment of inertia for rotations about the y-axis is going to be equal to m times r squared. And for rotations about the y-axis, uh, also I would have, so uh, these rotations around the y-axis, I would have uh, an angular speed omega, so that the angular momentum j would be equal to i omega, which is m r squared uh, omega. So let me, because it's called A here, so A is the uh, moment of inertia, but anyway, so this is IY uh, omega, which is MR squared omega. Recall that, uh, recall that in the problem statement, this is called A. So uh, the rotational kinetic energy will be given by 1 over 2 uh, IY omega squared. Uh, so I have uh, for omega j divided by mr squared. So this would be 1 over 2 uh, i y. Uh, and for omega I can write uh, j divided by mr squared, which is j divided by i y. So uh, this equation gives me omega is equal to uh, j divided by i y. So I need to square it. So the rotational kinetic energy of this molecule would be then 1 over 2 uh, j squared divided by i y. Well, i y is called a in the problem statement, so it's j squared divided by 2a. And a similar thing would happen for <coughs> same result for uh, rotations about the z-axis. So I would have exactly the same result for rotations about 
the z-axis. So I indeed see that classically this is the uh, rotational kinetic energy of this molecule. And now in a quantum treatment, in quantum mechanics, uh, this rotational kinetic energy depends on the quantum number j. It, it is h bar square j j plus 1 uh, divided by 2a and basically uh, the magnitude of uh, the angular momentum vector j magnitude is given by h bar square uh, square root j uh, j plus 1 is the magnitude of the angular momentum okay so uh, these j values total angular momentum quantum number can be 0 1 2 3 and uh, on the other hand, we have m sub j values. The uh, corresponding uh, values are in between minus j minus j plus 1 all the way up to j minus 1 to j. That is the uh, total uh, magnetic quantum number, m sub j. And uh, you can see that for each j value, we have two j plus one possible uh, values. So these are corresponding to uh, different spatial orientations uh, of of j of the j vector. For example, you you can have uh, the j vector oriented like this. The j vector oriented like that, the j-vector oriented like this, etc. So uh, it's the same j-vector, but we have different mj values. So you, you have, for example, mj equals minus 1, mj equals 0, mj equals plus 1, etc. So you would have the j-vector precessing about this axis uh, in this manner. So you have different spatial orientations of the angular momentum vector which is found by the corresponding value of m sub j. Okay, so we have 2j plus 1 distinct possible values for each energy. Now, in part a of the problem, we need to calculate the partition function uh, for this system. Uh, so, the partition function will be given by z is equal to uh, sum over j, all possible uh, j values, uh, e to the minus beta ej multiplied by the number of the degree of degeneracy. So 2j plus 1 e to the minus beta e sub j. So this is given by sum j equals 0 to infinity uh, 2j plus 1 e to the minus beta h bar squared j j plus 1 divided by 2a and now the problem statement says uh, you may want to call j j plus 1 is equal to u and look at the condition kt is much greater than h bar squared over 2a. So uh, let u is equal to j j plus 1 which is j squared plus j then you would have du is equal to 2j plus 1 and you can treat this u as a, a continuous variable uh, under the condition that you have a sufficiently large temperature. So uh, if kt is much greater than uh, h bar squared over 2a, then what would happen here? Uh, for the factor 
1 over kt h bar squared over 2a so 1 would be much greater than 1 over kt which is beta h bar squared over 2a so this beta h bar squared over 2a is a small number it's much less than uh, 1 and then you can have uh, a sufficiently high temperature and uh, therefore this quantum number can be uh, very large so you have uh, jj plus one as a approximately continuous variable so with that uh, we can see uh, when j is equal to zero you would have u is equal to uh, zero so we can turn this into an integral so the z can be approximated as an integral from zero to infinity e to the uh, minus beta h bar squared divided by 2a u and du all right so uh, I can see that uh, I can call alpha is equal to beta h bar squared over uh, 2a and with that this partition function will become 0 to infinity e to the minus alpha u du and this is a very simple integral uh, the integral will give me minus 1 over uh, alpha e to the minus alpha u from 0 to infinity at infinity it is 0 at 0 it is 1 so the answer would be 1 over alpha which is 2a divided by beta h bar squared or 2a kt divided by h bar squared so the partition function here is approximately 2a kt divided by h bar squared Now we apply the general relation of problem 4.18 to calculate the mean rotational energy of the diatomic molecule. Uh, so let's look at in part B the mean rotational uh, energy, kinetic energy of this molecule. It is given by minus 1 over B, uh, minus del ln z del beta or minus 1 over z del z del beta so this can be calculated uh, this way and uh, my z is basically 2a over h bar squared times 1 over beta because kt is 1 over uh, beta so uh, del z del beta would be equal to minus 2a over h bar squared beta squared so if i multiply this with uh, 1 over z so for the rotational uh, kinetic energy i would have minus 1 over z which is h bar squared over uh, 2a kt that is 1 over z and for del z del beta I have minus 2a uh, divided by h bar squared and 1 over beta squared is kt uh, squared so the minus sign will become a plus and I will see that the h bar square uh, cancels the 2a uh, terms uh, cancel and I will be left with only a single uh, kt here because this will get rid of uh, this one and uh, the answer will be kt so the rotational kinetic energy will be equal to kt in the limit kt is uh, in the limit kt is much greater than h bar squared uh, divided by 2a so if this condition is satisfied 
I will have KT for the mean uh, rotational uh, kinetic energy of this molecule. Now, uh, from equipartition theorem, if you remember, we can write the uh, rotational uh, kinetic energy of a molecule as 1 over 2 uh, I y omega squared plus 1 over 2 i z omega squared for uh, the x component we would have zero uh, in the scenario that i have plotted here i x is zero and if you take the mean value of this we find that this is 1 over 2 kt plus 1 over 2 kt the mean kinetic energy rotational kinetic energy should be kt classically So indeed, we find this result uh, using um, the quantum mechanical uh, version of the rotational kinetic energy.